Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon and today <laughs> he spoiled the surprise. I am back on my birthday to have a bit of a bookish chat with you and also introduce to you the newest member of the family. He is currently <laughs> named Biscuit. He's been through a few. He's currently absolutely loving the catnip on the bed because he's still just getting used to us. Here's my biscuits. There you go, biscuit. Sorry, I just gave him some more biscuits, so that'll keep him going. So he arrived here on Tuesday, just gone. He's not quite been here a week. He is lovely. He's nine years old. He uh, was sadly abandoned by his owners when they sold their house and so had been in care for about eight weeks, I think. He's a ginger short hair. He's got no front teeth at all. He's got quite bonkers, wiry whiskers. He's also quite little, and he's also got a slight problem with humping, but apparently that's normal when older cats move, and we'll have to see the vets, just to make double sure that he's been neutered. He hasn't met Millie and Oscar. In fact, no, he has met Oscar briefly. They've had sort of, sort of nose kisses and a bit of hissing, but, you know, that's quite good, really. He's here, and it's all really thanks to George, the cat who some of you may have seen on Instagram, I can't remember if I put him in any vlogs or not, but about six weeks ago now, a ginger cat turned up in the garden. He kept coming back and coming back to the same spot over the next couple of days near the shed. And so I left a bowl out and sure enough, where we'd popped a window because we thought foxes would make a den in it, he had made a home. And after about two weeks of getting to know him slowly but surely in the garden, then got to the point where he would sit on me and have a lovely cuddle and then he came inside and I always said the moment that I could pick him up we would take him to the vets and get him checked uh, to see if he was chipped. Sure enough there was a ping, my heart sort of fell because I was secretly hoping that he would be ours forever and it turned out though that he had been missing since October and had travelled about 25 miles so his owners were overjoyed, weeping. I was overjoyed for them and weeping because I was a little bit happy sad but after a little while we realised that we, oh honestly, I mean that's just full reason I'm also trying to cover the plugs up my head. After um, a bit of time without George we realised that we love Millie and Oscar obviously, we've had them for 12 years, just adore them. However, we also realised that we had the space in our hearts and our home and could financially give another cat a happy future and so here he is. He is a little character though and um, yeah, has, uh, has a few moments, but he's just getting used to us. And I have to keep reminding myself, like any time he's a bit out of sorts that, wow, this has only been what his, he's only been here four days so far. And like now look at him, he's had some lovely cuddles and lovely sleeps as well. So yeah, he's just started to learn to play, which is really, really lovely. And now he's having a bath for you. Anyway, so that is the birthday present that I got for myself as his adoption free plus a donation to Cats Protection, who we got him from, was something that I thought would be nice to do. I keep getting distracted by him, I'm really sorry, because I'm a little bit all over the shop and I don't think I'll film in here all the time because he is quite a distraction, as it proved, oh, that's Millie outside. She's spotted that there's another cat potentially. I'm going to just leave that sniffing to go on through the door. So, um, it's my birthday. I'm 42 today as this goes live. And I like to think that's me having reached level 42. <laughs> I don't know. Or is it like me 4.2? Anyway, I'm always a bit, I have, I've noticed the week leading up to my birthday, I go a bit internal and inward and sort of thinking about things. I mean, I do like a live audit quite often, I guess, for those of you who've been around for a while, you'll have seen. And like at the beginning of the year, I just listed things that I wanted to achieve this year and all that kind of stuff. But I'm sort of getting more and more into the mindset that maybe January to March is when I test things out. And then from March to sort of December, that's sort of when I kind of go with the flow of what I've sort of set up. Oh, I've had my sleeves rolled up this whole time honestly what have, <laughs> have you noticed that i've also dressed a little bit like biscuit so um right what i thought i would do a little bit different from usual and kind of oh what am i planning to do with my 42nd year i guess i don't want to really come up with a big list of things that i feel like i have to achieve or i have to do i definitely want to work on some affirmations but i think they're things that i'm just going to kind of keep to myself because i think sometimes you have to have the affirmations 
in your brain to percolate and sort of just be there just for you. It's a bit like if you blow out a birthday candle and make a wish, you're meant to keep it a secret, aren't you? So I feel like affirmations are something that I need to do. You've come back, hello. I mean, there's the two golden oldies in terms of life stuff that I always mention and I still haven't cracked. And maybe it's the eternal conundrum and we never really crack it, but I would like to get balance and boundaries much better aligned I guess or just sort of more part of my life and be a bit more savvy with that kind of stuff but I have said that I think for the last four five six years every time I've either done my plans for my forthcoming birthday year or just plans for the year in general but what I thought I would do that's a little bit different is take four books off the shelves that I think sum up what I would like to do with my reading going forward. I mean, if you would like to see a list of things that I would kind of like to maybe achieve or goals or anything that I have for the year, I'm happy to do a video on that at some point. But if you're not that bothered because you're just here for the bookish stuff, then that's what we're here to do. In terms of reading and books, I picked up these four books here and I feel like they show how I would like my reading and the books in my life to go in the next birthday year or until December, whichever. The first of those is the most recent arrival. And this is a book that I ordered from London Review of Books. And that links into a big thing for me for, well, going forward. I don't wanna keep saying for the next year or until December, cause that's gonna get really boring. I really want to going forward only buy books from independent bookshops. And this is a book that I couldn't see pretty much anywhere. And I was in London earlier this week, but it was on the London Review of Books website. Bookshop. The London Review of Books bookshop or the London Review bookshop? One of those. And it's up for the International Book Prize. It's White Nights by Ursula Honeck. Um, it's a collection of stories translated by Katie Webster. Now, I think it's from Polish. I'm not sure, but this captures several things that I would like to achieve. Achieve makes it sound like a goal. I don't want to say it's a goal. This has several elements to it of what I would like to see in my reading going forward. And that is, firstly, I would like to read a lot more fiction in translation. Secondly, I would really like to Sorry, it's really windy outside. I might get whisked off to Oz at any moment and end up in a pair of ruby slippers. Firstly, I would like to read more works in translation. Second, I would like to get through more short story collections, maybe even try and read a short story a day. We'll see. Thirdly, I would like to head to more independent presses. And fourthly, I would like to... Fourthly, I would like to try and find more books a little bit off the beaten path. Now this has become a book that's been known because of the Book It International. I'm not going to say that I want to necessarily follow lots of prizes. I might read the Booker Prize shortlist potentially. I'll definitely be reading the Women's Prize for Non-Fiction shortlist and I'm currently reading the Women's Prize for Fiction longlist. But I don't want to be led too much by prizes because I have noticed that I'll suddenly get kind of prize fatigue. Oh, look who's back. Hey Biscuit. Hello. Right. Oh, you're gorgeous. Oh, you're a lovely boy. You are. Anyway, oh, covering up, that's quite rude. But it's just the way it is. Sorry. So that, I think, sort of sums up in part some of the things that I would like to do with my reading. So, yeah, that's the first book. And I'm not going to make a list of these because, or maybe I will afterwards because I do love a list. But I'm going to, mm, I want to try not to because I want it to sort of happen naturally. But at the same time, do I want little signpost here and there maybe oh not again biscuit honestly i will cover him up with a book now and that next book is the luminous solution by charlotte wood and again this sort of symbolizes a lot of different things that i would like to come through from my reading going forward and that is one i'd really like to head to some of my favorite authors backlist and I have read the last three of Charlotte's novels and absolutely loved every single one. This came out in between the last two I think and I haven't got to it yet but also she's got more backlist books I just want to get my mitts on because I'm sort of sick of saving authors backlist for a rainy day like I don't know if that's I mean if I'm saving them for a windy day I'd be reading this right now. So there's that 
element, I'd like to head to more of my favourite authors' backlist. But also, I would really like to read more non-fiction and even, dare I say, not exactly self-help, but I'd like to read some books that kind of look at, like, the artistic sides within us also are kind of sort of guides to life a little bit maybe so that's something that I would really really like to do plus I would also just really really like to read a lot more Australian fiction I had the pleasure of meeting Charlotte Wood for the very first time on Wednesday just gone and we had been well we worked out we have been chatting on the internet we've done a few interviews we've done lots of like DMing each other and stuff since I read her incredible The Natural Way of Things was just phenomenal and I read that back in 2015 and yeah we've been in touch ever since and we got to meet each other for the first time last week and it was just wonderful. So that's really a big thing because I really love Australian fiction I used to read it a lot more and I've sort of fallen out of the habit as it were and so I would like to really get back into the swing of that so some, that's something that I'm really really keen to do as well as like I said head to more non-fiction. I'm trying not to stare at a certain young man who is now dry humping his fluffy bed. Not something I expected to say on my 42nd birthday. I was going to say it's not the first time I've said it but never mind let's all move swiftly on. The penultimate book that sums up or symbolises what I would like to happen with my reading more going forward is 10 Bridges I've Burnt by Brontes Pernell. Now this is the fourth book of Brontes's that I have bought and I need to stop doing that. I need to actually get on and read some of the authors who I have several books of on my shelves but I've never read a single one of them because that's just naughty behaviour and it was a little bit naughty that I bought this but actually it also symbolises the direction I'd like to send my reading in to a point without it being forced. I'm trying to be better at whim, but I have realised I'm just not very good at whim reading. Again, maybe that's something we'll crack in the future, who knows? This book also symbolises the fact that I'd like to read a lot more poetry. I have started reading a poetry collection in the bath, which is a little bit pretentious, but actually I really, really, really enjoy it, particularly queer poetry. But also I would like to head some more kind of experimental stuff. And this is Bronte's memoir in verse and that really intrigues me so I'm really really looking forward to this. I've also heard his writing is quite salacious, a little bit sexy but really thought-provoking. All of those things are what I would like in my reading diet going forward and also I would really really like to, after kind of having a bit of a break of reading queer fiction, I would definitely like to read a lot more queer fiction from authors of colour. So that's something else. I know this is poetry, not fiction, but it symbolises that to me. So there's several things there. Like I said, there's getting to those authors on my shelves where I've got two or three of their books and haven't read a single one. And also not buying more books by authors that I have on my shelves until I've read those books. So I'm going to try and hold myself to that a little bit more without it being like a punishment or anything, because no one wants that. Reading, and book buying, if you can, when you can, should always be fun. So we have that. And then last but not least is a book that I have read, but sort of symbolises something that I've been thinking about on and off for the last couple of years. And that is that I'm not really sure what sort of reader I am anymore. And I was thinking about that particularly after picking up Armistead Moore Pan's Moment of the Manor, which is the latest. I'm not saying last, I refuse to admit that it is the last of the Tales of the City series. And those books mean so much to me. I've said it quite a lot recently, I feel. I hadn't read Tales of the City when I was in my mid-teens and if I hadn't found them through the library and I do need to work out about joining a library because my local one isn't great but I would still like to be a member of it and also I really should join Liverpool because even though I don't go there as regularly as when I work there I do go past there a lot to get on the train and that would be a really really good idea. All right Chiripa. I was just saying yeah, if I hadn't found Tales of City in the library in my mid-teens I don't think I'd be the reader that I am today because I devoured them but also I don't think I would have had the hope that I did thanks to Armistead's words and the characters that he created that lived on Barbary Lane and yeah that that's something that has kind of been bouncing around in my brain since I hosted him in Bristol the Friday before last as this goes live and I've been kind of thinking, I didn't really know the reader I was then, I don't know, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent I feel, as is my want, I mean what's new, but I think what this also made me think about was 
who am I as a reader right now? What sort of reader am I? And also, I binge this in like literally two sittings and it has really made me want to get back to being the sort of reader who picks up a book any minute that they can and if the book isn't working for them, DNFs it and is a bit tougher. I didn't DNF this, as I said, I literally inhaled it because it was so fab. But that's something else. I really want the reading that I do to be fun. I know I read a lot for work, but yeah, I, I just want to let go of any guilt around DNFing, but also pick up books a lot more rather than scrolling through my phone for ages or watching TV shows that I don't really want to, but I kind of have just got into the habit of or spending time, I don't know. I mean, it's great actually listen to a bit of pop music on my headphones on the bus, for example, but also on trains. I've been dreadful at reading on trains and I think it's because I've realised if I'm not quite into a book before I get on a train, then the window and whatever's going on outside, even if I do that route regularly, like Liverpool to London, wins over. So yeah, I would like to do a lot more reading a lot more of the time. I think people think I read like all the time, but I don't. And then I guess that brings up the question of like, what about the channel? What's my plans? And really, it's just going to be creating content around all the reading that I do, the thoughts it makes me think, the experiences that I have around reading and kind of documenting that and it being about, and I've said this many a time on this channel too, not reading to create content, but create content from what I'm reading. So there we are, that's the plan. Um, those four books, I think, summed up everything that I've kind of got going in my brain at the moment in terms of reading and books, but it could all change and that's fine too. We've got to be flexible in life. But I would love to know though, even though I said I'm just gonna go, go by whim a bit with content, what you would like to see on the channel going forward. I'd love to know what you're reading right now. And yeah, that's my birthday catch up. I forgot to tell you to grab a cuppa and have that while you watch this, because it could have been an epic, but actually it's not been as long as I thought. So cheers to that. And cheers to my birthday. This is charity. It's absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoyed meeting Biscuit briefly. He's now just come for a sniff round here and sniff and rub against the books, which I always find a little bit like, oh, you know how I am about my books. I love you very much, Biscuit, but um, yeah, do you want to come and say goodbye to everyone? Come on, come on, Biscuit. Good boy, here he is. So there you go, that is him. There we are. Oh, could that be the thumbnail? Let me grab my books, hang on one second. Because earlier when I was trying to take the thumbnails, I know that Biscuit, there we go, it looked like he was reading the cover of that one. Anyway, I hope you're all doing super duper well and having a wonderful Sunday. We'll be back in the library at some point. I should say actually, the state of the library is another reason that we didn't film in there. Partly I wanted you to meet him, but also let me just insert the absolute chaos that is going on in there. I mean, that's one of the first things that I've got to sort out in my 42nd year is that absolute situation. Anyway, I hope you're all doing super duper well. Thank you as always for watching. It's lovely catching up with you. Let me know in the comments any content that you'd like to see going forward. See, I didn't say for the rest of this year or the rest of my 43rd year, even though I am only 42. Only 42. I was thinking, is 42 a bit too old to be doing a YouTube channel? But I decided no. We should be having YouTube and booktube channels from people of all walks of life, all ages, the more the merrier. Anyway, I'm waffling on again now. I'm going to go. I will speak to you all soon and let me know in the comments any content you'd like to see and what you are currently reading and I will see you in another video, possibly with him, very, very soon. Bye!